Um, yeah, I'm here. I'm here alone now, but maybe Francois Brunet will join me later on uh, to present some of the stuff live. But he is doing a workshop now. Uh, so I'm Jeroen Tichler, uh, founder and chair of the Geo Network Open Source Software, uh, which we started developing uh, over 10 years ago, not 12 years ago, I think. Um, yeah, I'll get the microphone. If that works. Yeah, that's recording. Yeah, so let me see. Does this work? Well, I'll try to speak up then. <coughs> Drink some water. There was sparkling water, so now my voice is gone completely. <coughs> um, so I'm Jeroen Tichler. I founded the Geo Network project, uh, I think, 12 years ago now, uh, when working at the United Nations uh, Food and Agriculture Organization. Um, I left uh, FAO five years ago to start my own company, GeoCut. And uh, yeah, Geo Network has been. Uh, developing ever since uh, with, with quite a good team of developers and, and a very broad network of users. So what I'll do is uh, I'll discuss a little bit of wha what is GeoNetwork, how we develop, um, and then have a couple of slides on what's new uh, and how you can use it. So it's been two years that we have not uh, presented this, obviously, in Phosphor-G, so a lot of things happened. Um, <coughs> basically, what GeoNetwork is, is a, is a software to publish your data through metadata. And it's really all about uh, properly describing your data and making it uh, uh, findable on the web. Is that findable? Is that a good word? Search. Searchable. Uh, discoverable probably is the is the word. Um, so it provides you with a very comprehensive metadata editing and management system. Um, and I'm surprised in 12 years how much you can actually add to a metadata system and uh, and still not be done with it. Uh, but the basic building blocks that uh, that we build the software on are standards coming out of the ISO Technical Committee 211. Uh, so it's the metadata standard 19115, for instance, uh, and there's a whole list of related standards to that. Uh, there's uh, the Open Geospatial Consortium standards that we use a lot. And uh, those are used, for instance, on the catalog interoperability. So we have descriptions of metadata in the system. Uh, we make those searchable. Um, but then you don't want to only access this through a website. In fact, most people don't really want to access this through, through the main entry point, but want to have that metadata propagate through systems in a network and then discover it at all different places. So we have support for uh, Inspire, for instance, in Europe, which is important. Uh, but we also then uh, support, and then we support all kind of catalog services uh, interfaces, like the OGC catalog service for the web interface, Open Archive, which is uh, an interface used uh, at libraries mainly. Um, we have RSS news feeds, Atom feeds, um, and we have Open Geo, uh, sorry, Open Search extension. That is, for instance, when you type something in your browser in the search, uh, small search box in your browser, you could actually connect it to search into a catalog, uh, geo network catalog. Then we have a whole system of metadata harvesting and synchronization, so you can connect one catalog to a whole lot of other catalogs that use those kind of uh, interfaces. And so you can get that metadata out of the other catalogs and kind of cache it locally. So it's, uh, we, we say harvesting, synchronization, duplication, whatever. You, you store it locally, so you make your search local in that catalog, and you can do your ordering also 
across the whole lot of metadata that is uh, in your catalog at that point. Um, it doesn't pollute the metadata that you store in it, so the things are kept. You know, you remove some catalog from your harvesting scheme and then metadata is removed from your catalog, etc. So I, I think that catalogs, in a way, are the glue in the spatial data infrastructure. And uh, they then describe data sets. They describe data services, web map services, feature services, download services, whatever you call them. Um, but without the proper descriptions, they become really hard to find and, uh, and know what you're actually dealing with. So that's, the, yeah, that's all what GeoNetwork does, basically. Then it has a user interface, and we've been building a new front end on it in, uh, that was released in version 2.10 uh, just a couple of months ago. And that we'll also work with tomorrow. There's, tomorrow there's a workshop I'll give uh, on how to set up and, and manage a GeoNetwork catalog. It's a free workshop. I think it's in the other building uh, tomorrow morning. And we'll look at this interface and we'll start configuring a harvesting task. We'll start configuring some map services with the metadata, uh, get it into the catalog, and edit things, edit metadata inside this web, uh, multilingual metadata, which is supported. Um, so yeah, you're welcome to join the workshop tomorrow. But then the application itself is just the basis for setting up your own catalog. So this is the software release, and it looks kind of nice and fancy. And But then you build your own interface. So Or you build a new application on, at the top of the server that will just use a catalog service for the web, for instance, to, to interact with it. Or you use the out-of-the-box user interfaces that are available. And currently, we have. I think there's three different applications that you could use as user interface that come directly with GeoNetwork. Uh, plain HTML based, uh, X JavaScript based, um, and now we're working on uh, new Bootstrap uh, and uh, the other one, uh, Angular based. Uh, but I'll have some screenshots of that. So where is that used in Europe? Um, these are countries that I know of uh, that use it at the national level for their Inspire portals in some form. Um, so that is in Europe is quite significant number of the countries that use the software for the for the publishing of uh, metadata for the Inspire. Um, then it's also used in in Canada, Australia, U.S., uh, Africa, all over the world. Um, but quite often in quite uh, complex systems. I know the Met Office here is, is using it as part of uh, a bigger system. Um, so a big, big user base. So how do we develop that? Um, it's, it's a community-driven project. Um, in there, we try to, to get people, to get users together and, and kind of define what is needed in next releases. Uh, so we had a meeting, this, I think this was two or three years ago, with European countries for Inspire. And we'll have a similar meeting again uh, end of November. And then we start defining big building blocks that we want to tackle and, uh, and kind of get the funding right and the specifications right. We currently have about 800 people on the, on the user mailing list. Um, that's the English one. There's a French mailing list with 200 subscribers and the, and the Spanish one as well. Uh, 400 people on the developer mailing list. That's the most active list. And then there's a commit list, and, and there's about 10 active software developers working on it. Uh, this is kind of a graphic of the downloads. It's kind of stable. Uh, over the last couple of years, um, between 1,500 and 2,000 downloads per month, which I, I absolutely don't understand who's downloading all this stuff, but at least we know it's, it's downloaded. So how do we collaborate? 
uh, as I said, community driven. Uh, so we have proposals coming in, uh, proposals that come through the developers usually. Uh, we discuss it, uh, we sit together, um, or we sit together online on Skype. Uh, we vote on the mailing lists, and uh, once it has been implemented, we uh, accept it for integration into Trunk. So we use Skype uh, conference calls. Uh, I don't think we've used Google Hangout yet, but uh, likely do at some point. Uh, and we have face-to-face -face meetings. So we meet here. Uh, we usually meet for a week in, uh, in Italy. Uh, every year and sit together and kind of go through all the issues. Split the work in smaller packages. And as I said, we, we're basically in constant uh, contact between uh, user and developer as well as developers. Uh, so what I try to do in GeoCut is have the developers directly communicate with the client on what, what are their needs and uh, so try to get that, uh, the lines very short. We also provide the support contracts. So if you want your system, uh, if you want that phone number, you can call, or that email address, you can uh, ask your questions. Uh, we provide that type of support and, and then uh, try to resolve your problem as soon as we can. So the benefits, we support common requirements of a, of a very large group. It's very, very different also in type of users. Um, so there's people that deal mostly with vector data, but there's people that deal with raster data, tabular data, uh, huge quantities of data. But their uh, requirements are to describe and make findable. Uh, and that then is sometimes described in, uh, in metadata that is focused on vector data, but you also have metadata focused on raster data and so on. So all these different metadata profiles are supported and you can add your own profiles to the system. Uh, it makes the testing and compliance easier because of all this cross testing within the community and we share the cost. So that's that's actually quite a big deal. By, by just uh, distributing the cost among a whole range of countries, uh, each country just pays pretty limited amount of money and, and uh, we have a big, big improvement in the system. Um, so preventing the vendor lock-in, the, the obvious open source uh, things. Uh, and, and innovation, because we have researchers that do f research projects all around the world uh, in the EU, FP7 projects, I know research projects, a lot of uh, in Australia. Um, they come with new things and then uh, they get it into the system pretty quickly. First testing and then later uh, embedded. So you can follow the project. It's a, it's, this is also kind of a trademark for the sustainability of the project. There's a solid user and uh, developer community behind it. So on the, on the new version, 2.10, I think the last one I presented at Phosphor-G was 2.6. Uh, there's been 2.8 and now we're 2.10. Um, as I said, it was released with a lot of function, new functionality. It's, it's way too much to actually discuss here. Um, but there's a, there's a page on our uh, developer website that lists all the proposals and functions that have gone into the system. Obviously, there's release notes you can read. And I'll just show a couple of things. So there was a widgets-based user interface uh, designed that was done mainly for the Dutch National Geo Registry. Um, and that has been ported into, and also the Swiss one, actually. And that has been ported and, and is now the default user interface uh, when you download and install. There's a support for metadata profile plugins. So while in earlier versions we were implementing a profile directly in the software, 
Uh, and if you needed North America profile to be in it, it would need to be built in. Uh, now those are plugins, so they're kind of zip files that contain all the all the stuff you need for uh, validation, uh, schematron validation, schema validation, um, so that define how your what your editor looks like, what how it's presented, all of that is fitted into a metadata profile plugin, and you can load your own profiles uh, and and also develop them separately. And I'll come back to that. We've been uh, splitting up the software in uh, smaller components that, in the end, you still download one uh, installer. But if you go to the source code, you can actually see the different components uh, in, in Git. So we've also made the move from uh, Subversion to Git at some point, uh, over a year ago. So this is kind of the entry point, the website, uh, if you install the software now. Um, if you install, there's nothing yet. So here I've loaded uh, metadata templates and I've loaded some sample data. When you do a search, we have uh, filtering on the left. Um, so you can filter by uh, organization, for instance, by keyword, by type of data, uh, type of service, um, scale the data is available in. So all information coming out of the metadata. Um, and then you'll get your results. You can display your results uh, like this, but also with just the thumbnails. Um, when you go over with your mouse, you'll see the extent of your data set on the small map on the side. Um, you can immediately filter to see only web services, for instance. There's a new presentation layer uh, using this XJavaScript layout. We'll, we're now working on the new layout again, but you have different view modes there. There's a, there's a default view mode, there's an inspire view mode. You can view your metadata by, by metadata package. Uh, you can see the XML, you can edit the XML. You can edit it in all these different view modes. And in the system configuration, so the administrator can define which view modes are available to your end user. So if you only want to have default view to your end user, you can uh, uh, make sure that they only see that view mode option and not all the other ones. <coughs> in the editor, as well as in the results, you can uh, use the right click and, and the contextual menus to uh, edit, to duplicate your metadata, uh, to set the privileges, so who has access to what parts of metadata, um, to what, uh, maybe to what kind of services, um, print, export, so you can export whole sets of metadata and data. And the editor, this is the editor when started. And this is in a view mode with all the packages. So you have a tabbed view. When you go over, you get help on, on what exactly you're looking at on the right. There's a validation report on the right. So you can see where your metadata is, uh, is invalid. Um, it also has suggestions. So if you added the keywords comma separated, the suggestion would be to split it up in, uh, in separate keywords. Um, and then you could actually apply such a, such a change. So you could select the suggestion and click uh, apply. And then it will do that work for you. Um, you can relate records in related resources. So you can have a parent-child relationship between uh, metadata of services and then all the individual layers, for instance. Uh, to go up and down through your uh, data set. So it, this data is used in that and that and that service. Uh, or that service uses this and this and this data and the, the links are all in the, in the catalog and maintained. And a lot more. Uh, for instance, a feature to upload the data set uh, as a zip file, as a shape, 
and then uh, instantly deploy it on a geo server. So it then uses the geo server REST API and deploys a web map service for you. So you don't have to go through different systems. You select your geo server and, and launch your map service instantly. As I said, the schema, metadata schema plugin is quite important. Um, if you have, if you're working with a marine profile, uh, you have your own validation rules, your own requirements, and you can basically de develop a schema plugin and maintain that yourself and then uh, load it into the system when you need it. Um, what we are working on and where I hope uh, Europe with the Inspire project will support us is developing a Metadata 101 uh, kind of organization and, and it's also a Git repository where we will store these kind of profiles. So this will allow people to collaborate on the profiles and uh, have a central place where we maintain them and, and actually the people that are responsible for a marine profile can update their marine profile uh, and the one responsible for North America profile can maintain his. And so that would kind of be a central location of, uh, of metadata profiles. They could be used in whatever system. Uh, we will use them in Geo Network, but obviously you can use them in other uh, software as well. And what we want to do is, is kind of put a permissive license on that so that it can be incorporated in both open source as well as proprietary software to make sure that there's a lot of systems that validate against the same uh, schemas and schematron rules. So what I mentioned, uh, Francois, and I, I don't see him here, so I'll just go through some screenshots and we won't have a live demo is working on a new administration interface at this moment. One minute. Okay, so this is very quick. Um, that's based on uh, Angular JavaScript, uh, D3, and uh, Bootstrap. And it's probably uh, very likely that we use the same also for the end user user interface in the future. So just a couple of screenshots. This is then the new admin console where you can update metadata and templates, <coughs> import, export data, set up harvesting, uh, see statistics and status information on your uh, catalog instance. Um, so you can see what type of terms are searched and uh, if your database connections are fine, et cetera, et cetera. User and group administration, uh, controlled vocabularies, and a whole lot more. And it, it's really a lot, so I will just show very limited <coughs> things on it. But here's a database uh, status, for instance. It says that your indexes are OK, that your database connections are OK, that your uh, catalog servers uh, get capabilities document is OK. Um, information on uh, what kind of services are used for the search. So is my. Uh, CSW very popular or is it the uh, user interface that is used most? And so you, you kind of get an idea of where people search. Um, you can see this in all kind of different ways. This is uh, search statistics. So again, based on services as far as I see it. Very quick. Uh, so search terms that are used. So what's the most popular type of search terms used? And you can start filtering by category, et cetera, et cetera. Harvesting configuration is, uh, is being uh, <coughs> changed so the user interface for that and becomes much more transparent. You select your uh, catalog you want to harvest from and all the settings are in the same screen and you can update quickly. So I think that's it. I have some sample implementations, but I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. So we've got time, time for some quick questions before we switch over to the next presentation. Uh, we wrote a schema plugin for T9. I get the impression uh, that it's real. 